Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, welcome to the week with me, Comrade Fatso. And a lot has happened since you last saw me. Churches have called for a seven-year Sabbath. Prices of basic commodities have reached another level. And marvelous Nakamba became the best football player in the world, allegedly. But first, Jema Church Church. The Zimbabwe heads of Christian denominations have proposed that Zimbabwe suspends all political contests, in particular elections, for a period of seven years to allow the country and economy to heal and rebuild trust through political cooperation. Did you smell that? Yep. It smells like propaganda. You don't have to look far to see that this is propaganda. Shingi Munyeza has been one of the most vocal people in support of this move. Who is Shingi Munyeza, you ask? A former successful businessman and a pastor who is now part of the Presidential Advisory Council. Most importantly, ask yourself who stands to gain the most from this move to suspend the constitution that stipulates that elections should be held every five years. Yep, this guy. My favorite part is that the church says we should vote in a referendum about whether we should not vote anymore. Huh? And where were the churches when people were getting shot and beaten up? Dear church leaders, we don't need a break from elections. We just need a break from ZANU-PF. Simple. In the midst of all this political and economic chaos, you know what has remained consistent? Price increases. Ah, yes. Price increases always find a way to rise and break new barriers uh, and wallets. I mean, you, you can't help but be proud. Petrol is now $14.97 per litre, while diesel is $15.64 per litre. The price of electricity increased by 320%, with the kilowatt going from 38 cents to 162 cents. Amazing! Have you seen the price of a bag of maize seed? It seems everything has been hit by inflation. Everything except for civil servant salaries. If the government can review the price of fuel every week to match inflation, why can't they do that for salaries? After having suffered from several rigged elections, Zimbabweans have decided if you can't beat them, join them. Recently, Zimbabweans have taken this special talent to the English Premier League, where Zimbabwean national Marvelous Nakamba plays for Aston Villa. For the past three weeks, Marvelous Nakamba has been overwhelmingly voted man of the match. Analysis shows that most of the votes for his wins have come from the small English town of Uzumba Marambapungwe. Rigging has now overtaken tobacco as Zimbabwe's biggest export. Some are calling for Nakamba to stand against ED in the 2023 elections. I personally think it will be an own goal. Hashtag Boramsangu. Rwanda has just announced that it will start producing the first ever African-made smartphones. Everyone is like, wow, Rwanda is so advanced, so innovative. GGG. No, Iowa, Kwete. Us Zimbabweans are much more innovative than them. And to prove it, here are five Zimbabwean innovations. One, bush bakeries. Two, 2% tax. 
three forex accounts with no forex four record-breaking hyperinflation five this tractor at robert mugabe airport it's my personal favorite while we were on production break bob got hurriedly buried in jimba so we feel that now is a good time to reflect on bob's legacy so here is the alphabet according to bob a stands for air zimbabwe the plane that bob used to commandeer willy-nilly compared with ed's taste for dubai private jets that seems like the good old days b stands for blair as in blair keep your england and i will keep my zimbabwe c stands for commander in chief of the defense forces d stands for dashura the best way to deal with cheeky opposition e stands for emerson because despite it all he is really a gift from bob f stands for flying to foreign hospitals bob's favorite pastime g stands for ukurahundi h stands for heroes acre also known as the zanu pf retirement grounds i stands for indigenous j stands for jatrofa the wonder fuel and savior of the economy how far with that k stands for kufundi savan vanu vanu funduka ka L stands for land reform, especially for the chefs. M stands for my boarding as a youth. Now that was true youth employment. N stands for never again, as in Zimbabwe will never be a colony again, unless you're Chinese and very nice to us. O stands for opposition. P stands for prosperity, hypothetical prosperity. Q stands for cues. Our late president really was a true pioneer of many diverse forms of cues. R stands for S stands for stop it in the wise words of his wife until she was stopped. You stop it. T stands for Tamba Woga, a true Zanu PF praise singer. Where is he now? U stands for Uzumba, Bob's most loyal constituency. V stands for vets, not Isusuma vet, but my war vets. W stands for war veteran, least we forget. X stands for ex farmer, also known as former farmer, aka my vet. Also, X stands for ballot stuffing. Hashtag #mavots why stands for youths such as Absalom Sikosana who was head of Zanubia Youth League until he was like a million years old Z stands for Shimba his eternal resting place who would have thought the national citizens convention recently happened bringing together citizens civic organizations and social movements together citizens launched their vision for a new zimbabwe that is based on new people centered politics a just and sustainable economy and broad based dialogue Join the conversation about the Zimbabwe you want with Citizens Manifesto on Twitter. Thanks for joining us on the week. Follow Magamba TV on social media. I've been Comrade Fatso. You have been the people. This has been the week. Bread is now $40. Thank you and food sack. <laughs>